All my friends' fathers were cops, firemen, sanitation workers, or worked in Kennedy Airport. Like my dad worked at Kennedy Airport. I, I only know two languages. I speak English and I speak cop. I'm a New York City police officer. I've been doing that for 20 years. I grew up in Rosedale, Queens. Via, I lived in Ozone Park for the first uh, five, six years of my life. Then I moved to Rosedale, which is the most southern part of Queens. Well, my parents immigrated here in the 50s, and you know they came to work here, like most uh, of my friends' parents who are Irish American. Every nationality, every ethnic group, every religion in the book is in Queens. Yeah, I wasn't exactly, didn't see, like I guess, the bad part of New York. Bryant Park used to be very seedy. This used to be a place where everybody would, would come here to get their drugs. When I first became a cop and I came to Manhattan, it was, it, it was just like a different world. I grew up in the Bronx and um, everybody in my building was um, Holocaust survivors. So there were people from Germany and Poland, everybody had the numbers on the arms, and uh, a lot of different accents. My grandparents spoke English and Yiddish, but if they were telling a joke, they would tell the joke all in English, and then they'd get up to the punchline, and then it would be in Yiddish, so I didn't understand what they were talking about. One of the expressions uh, that they used a lot was kish min tuchis, which means kiss my ass, and nisht is nisht, which is, you know, when I didn't want to eat things most of the time, it's like, well, no is no, and um, get schluffy, go to sleep. So that's about all they said to me. The dominant emotion in New York is nostalgia. The velocity of change, which is just natural to a city like this. You go away for the summer, you come back, and your favorite coffee shop is a hole in the ground. Hello? Hello? No, no! So uh, I'm known as the king of nostalgia. My shtick was always, you know, reminiscing about the past. Let's go down memory lane. I was born in the Bronx. I uh, broke into radio when I was 15 years old. Then I got a call with different Channel 7. They were lighting up. They said, Joe, we're lighting up in the daytime. We like your voice. If we give you an hour a day, what kind of a show might you want to do? I said, How about a show? I do a show of people talking, nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball. They said, Joe, you're out of your mind. You can't do a talk show on television. You got to give them you got to give action, salsa bottles, pratfalls, baggy pants, got to give burlesque kits. I invented the talk show. I, I invented the couch. The, you know, I was about 17 years old. I invented uh, through the years. I had five U.S. presidents. My singer was Barbara Streisand for, for two years. Bette Midler was my singer, Eddie Fisher. Joan Rivers, Al Pacino, Dustin Hoffman, Bill Cosby. Was a, always, a, I still am a fanatical student of the voice. So the accent to me is, is an ingredient you put on the steak to make it more flavorful. These them and those and over defense and it's it's tapering off. Even even though with the influx of immigration, it's, it's for some strange reason, I don't hear it as bad, as much as I used to. I love it. I, I miss the accent. Now I like I walk down the street hoping to see somebody that I grew up with, you know, hoping to see somebody I know. Hey, how you doing? You know, that kind of stuff. Audie, Robert De Niro, Clement Caserta, Butchie the Hat, Vinny Vela. Most of the people I grew up with, real. No phones, all real people. The buildings, whoever looked up at these buildings? I never did, until I got older. And I look up, I say, holy shit, they're really nice. You fought to get out of here. You fought like hard to better your life and move on. And, you know, it was a rough day, but, but who knew? Who knew it was gonna be this? I would've told everybody, buy the buildings, buy the buildings be rich today. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, dude, that would be awesome. Well, I would Thank you so much. appreciate yeah. learning about that from you. Yeah. As a short observation of the neighborhood, it looks pretty good. I love the way it is. Everybody's flowing, they're doing what they want to do. There is peace in this area of Williamsburg, and I love peace. You know, I've always been interested in architectural vernacular, you know. And this is my train set ghetto installation. 
I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I guess there are, there are some people who are here sort of by default, but what makes New York great um, is that it's sort of this self-selecting group of people, for better or for worse, um, who I guess uh, are sick of being li living like a boring life. So they all move here to, to pursue something. So that energy makes everybody's experience a little more interesting. But I don't know too many native New Yorkers. There's pretty much nothing you can find in New York for like less than 500 a month, which is a pretty significant chunk of change. So I guess that sort of ties you to a job and a certain way of living, whereas I guess, you know, probably in the early 80s, you know, if you wanted to pretty much not have a job and just spend all your time doing whatever, you know, making art, making music, being up for an hour, it's probably a lot easier to do that. I don't know, I probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't stray too far if, if I had to move, maybe I'd move to Greenpoint. See you, praise God. Oh, I love Williamsburg. This is brand new, locale, and uh, really it's amazing. This strip that we're coming up to is called Manhattan Avenue. This is perhaps the most well-known avenue. Even our marathon comes running down Marathon Lane over here, and they draw the line down here. Well, I think that Brooklyn is sort of like a, should be its should be its own little nation. I like Brooklyn a lot, but uh, I think it's just because I've never left Brooklyn. I have no interest when people talk to me about other places in the world. I like to see them, you know. My wife is a traveler and she'll go there, but I I couldn't live without Brooklyn. Yeah, some people will say to me, oh, you're a real cab driver. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that means. It might have something to do with the way I drive sometimes because I don't pay that much attention to the streets. But I feel that I have a Brooklyn accent. All right, there is a breaking down, and everybody seems to be talking and saying, but over here, you're going to get Polish. Over here, I always say, Dovizhenia, Dovizhenia, because most of the people don't speak English. One of the most dramatic changes over the last 20 to 30 years has been the rise of inequality within New York City. The two classes that exist in America is, exist in New York. And it's not about color either. It's about that color, green. Definitely the, the immigration in the last 25 years is a different character than it was before that. Increasingly, especially given the role of big finance and that's uh, expanding job base, it's attracted very educated, uh, high earners, from within the United States as well. And given they have so much money and are earning so much and dominate the tax base and, and the consumer base, uh, they've had a disproportionate influence on uh, the local culture. Uh, it's been a driving force behind the Americanization of New York City. You can't even smoke in New York now. I mean, come on. I mean, I don't smoke, but I think people should be allowed to smoke here and drink. If you want to live like a real clean way, then in America, you should live in a gated community. This is New York City. Anything goes here. They used to say Broadway never dies. Well, Broadway is, as far as I'm concerned, it's dead. It died when they named like a couple of theaters after lawyers. There's also starting to become this like, uh, this melding in, in America in general, you know? I, I'm noticing like just a homogenization of an American accent. The strip of New York City that is going to be very well off and highly educated, like the, the Manhattan turning into Brooklyn Strip, uh, there probably won't be a quote New York accent. The language keeps changing from the bottom so that it's the slang that becomes sanctified and adds new words. On a large scale, my research is about uh, studying uh, human language, especially in social media, so informal conversational language. Uh, using computational statistical techniques. Started, we had this idea that you could uh, perhaps detect where people were from just based on how they were writing on Twitter. Think of the word something and you can write this out and you can write it out properly. One form that we'll see that's kind of interesting from a New York perspective is that people will write this out S-U-T-T-I-N, Sutton. Uh, and that's something that we see almost exclusively 
uh, in New York. Do you? So this is this is a second person a second person pronoun where people use the you twice for emphasis for some reason, and that's that's really a New York specific thing. Uh, Od is another one uh, for very uh, dead ass is a New York uh, sort of northeastern but but centered in New York. I've never seen any Yiddish on Twitter. People are concerned about homogenization from mass media. You know, from what we see, uh, regional differences uh, in language are, are, are alive and well uh, in social media, and if anything, growing stronger. I say, the bridge is over, the bridge is over. Hey, hey, hey. The bridge is over, the bridge is over. Hey, hey, hey. The bridge is over. Every time you think you understand New York, the next day something new happens. New York is always going to be in flux. In many ways, memory is what we have. Accents have a reason for existing. They support your existence in one way or another. What do you sound like? Manhattan keeps on making it. Brooklyn keeps on taking it. Bronx keeps creating it. And Queens keeps on faking it. A knish is delicious dish that's served in New York. You get it from a truck. All you gotta do is walk to any corner and ask the man, could I get one of those? And I swear you're gonna love it from your head down to your toes. That shit is good. Ooh, what's the matter with your MC Marley Mar? Don't you know that he's out of touch? What's the matter with your DJ MC Shan on the wheels of steel Marlin sucks? You better change what comes out your speaker. You better off talking about your whack boomer sneaker. Because Bronx created hip hop, queens will only get dropped. It's still telling lies to me. Everybody's talking about the juice crew funny, but you're still telling lies to me.